Hello and welcome to the Awakening Together YouTube channel. If you'd like more information on our community and our non-dual direct path teachings, please visit our website, awakening-together.org. This installment is our sat song with Leonard Jacobson. You can find out more on his website, leonardjacobson.com. We hope that you enjoy the sat song. All right. So it is officially Friday, November 18th. We are very excited to have with us today, Mr. Leonard Jacobson, who joins us here at Awakening Together for our December satsang interview. Uh, today, Leonard will be joined by Anne Blanchard and myself, uh, who will be interviewing Leonard. And I promise you, you are in for just the most delightful, peaceful, hour and a half of just being fully present to right here, right now that you have experienced. So I want to say thank you, Leonard, for joining us. Okay, it's my pleasure. Are you going to be interviewing me or interrogating me? Uh, we <laughs> promise that it'll, we promise it'll be an interview, okay, maybe a good. little bit interrogating, but you know, okay. we won't no. do that. We won't torture you that badly. Okay, no problem. <laughs> After just sitting and watching your movie, Liberating Jesus, for a couple of days here, I mean, what is there to interrogate? Your message is just gorgeous. Thank you, Leonard. Well, thank you, and I'm glad you related to it in that way. Most people do, actually, which was rather surprising to me when I first embarked upon that project, but uh, most people respond to it very favorably, even... Um, uh, quite a lot of Christian people who have seen it, who respond very favorably. Not everyone, of course, but most or many do. Well, it is quite gorgeous. So, And uh, I definitely want to spend some time talking with you about that. Mm -hmm. While we're here together, I want to also announce to our community that it is our intention to make that part of what we do on a monthly basis is we actually have a movie watcher group and we use it to help us see what messages there are for each of us. Um, and we are going to invite people to watch liberating Jesus for our December movie watcher group. So just wanted to let everyone know that and Blanche okay. will be hosting that. Um, okay. So I'm going to let Anne kick off the questioning then. Okay, that works Anne. for you both. Over to you, Anne. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Rhoda. Thank you, Leonard. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So let me just uh, join Rhoda and warmly, as chaos is happening around me, to warmly invite you. Thank you for fitting us in. We know you're a, a, a busy man, but in spending time um, getting to know you, your message, I, I just feel to begin by just saying thank you. You know, thank you for spending the time you have obviously spent to allow such clarity and such love and such devotion to the truth to come through. It is infectious. And I am thrilled that, that we all get a chance now to bask in that clarity. So the first thing I just want to say is thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. And thank you. They're two very beautiful words. Okay. So we, the very good news is we have about 90 minutes now, maybe about 82 minutes, but um, a good chunk of time. And so what I want to do is empower you to know that we have the, you know, 80 some minutes. And so I just want to empower you to, to feel free if there is something you feel like we want to be getting to, or you'd like to move us along a little bit, or maybe redirect that us, you know, the message and you know what you can do with 80 minutes. And yet we're going to, this is going to be uh, um, interactive. And yet, but I, but I just want to say that you have a very keen sense of the breadth of, of what there is that, that can be offered. And we just want to yes. invite you to, to let us know that if, when, yes. as time goes by. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Wonderful. So maybe we just start right at the beginning, um, which is, I love the way you have just distilled this down to this two-step process. Now, there's all kinds of different ways to go, and there's lots of intricacies, you know, still waters run deep. Um, but but the, the simplicity and, the, and really the um, eloquence and the elegance of those two-step two process, maybe we could just let you begin by just giving us that overview to allow everyone to, to get a sense of kind of what, how you've crystallized this. 
Okay, so um, first of all, I, I appreciated many years ago that whatever message is going to come out through me has to be very clear and simple and direct. And there's a reason for that, because I don't think there's ever been a more urgent time for humans to awaken and literally evolve into the next level of consciousness that really is inherently who we are. But we've been very slow in that in that um, evolution process. And we should have really awakened, I'd say, back in the time of Buddha, but certainly in the time of Jesus. And we'd be living in radically a radically different world had we awakened back then. So this is another chance that we have. Many, te many people are teaching now, teaching this. Many people are ready for awakening. And my sense of it is that more, more so than ever before in history, is there a readiness for awakening. And in a way, that's because of the urgency that we, we need to awaken. So there are two steps to this teaching, two simple steps. The first step is literally learning the art of being present, learning how to be present, how to relax into presence, how to deepen into presence, and ultimately how to become fundamentally established in presence. And I share in this teaching a very simple and immediate way of being present. It really eliminates practices, it eliminates the need to meditate for 30 years. It, it, it's so simple and direct, but in a way it's too simple because the ego is always looking for something more complex. The ego will say it can't be this simple. So we have to be aware of that. So that's step one, learning the art of being present. And within that step, there is a very simple key to coming out of the past and future world of the mind into the world of now, a very simple key. And that key, I'll just very briefly state it. That key to coming out of the past and future world of the mind, which I sometimes call our dream, the dream, right? The past and future world of the mind made up of memory, imagining, all your ideas, concepts and beliefs, all your opinions, all that makes up the world of the mind, all your sense of who you are based on your past experiences. It all makes, it all goes to make up that world of the mind. So how do we come out of the past and future world of the mind into presence? Very simple so simple it's ridiculous you just notice your thinking and that's okay you can keep thinking if you want but you have a god-given right to shift your focus and become present with something that's actually here in the moment with you if you can see it you can be present with it if you can hear it feel it taste it touch it or smell it you can be present with it it means that whatever you're being present with is of the present moment it's not of the past and future world of the mind. So as soon as you're truly present with something that's here, really here in the moment with you, then you must come out of the mind because mind is past future. Now you're present. It's really as simple as that. And thoughts will stop without you trying to stop them because thoughts also are always past or future. You can't think about the present moment. You can only think about the past or future. If you get involved in those thoughts, you believe in those thoughts, or you reject those thoughts, you're going to be taken straight into the world of the mind, the past and future. But if you simply observe the thoughts for what they are, don't be for them or against them and focus on what's here now, now you're present. And let me say this because it's a little bit uh, stunning. Any moment you are truly present, which means you're here and nowhere else, in that moment of true presence, you are an awakened being. It's as simple as that. Now, when you get pulled back into the dream, into the mind, into the past and future, the world of never-ending thought, then you're just disconnected from your awakened state. But the truth is, you and everyone watching this right now is already an awakened being. You always have been, you are in this moment, and you always will be. There's just nothing you can do about it. But the catch is, it's very easy to disconnect from this awakened state of, of presence, how do you disconnect? Well, it's like this. Riding on the wings of thought, we enter the world of time. Riding on the wings of thought, we enter the world of the mind. That's the only way we can leave the present moment. To be present is our natural state. It's the truth of who you are. And the only way you can leave is to think your way out of the present moment. And then if you believe in your thoughts, you reject your thoughts or you believe in them, then you're going to be now caught in that dream. 
and it might take another 28 lifetimes to liberate yourself, seriously. So once you've experienced presence and you know what it feels like, you just relax and just relax there. This is it. I love those words from the uh, from India. Uh, ah, this. That's really a beautiful expression of one who is present. Ah, this. You look around and, and ah, this. You see, when we're in the dream, in the mind, in the past and future, in our story, it's very strange because in that in that dream, we are the star of our own stories. You're the star of your story. You're the star of your story, Rhoda. This is how it is. But as you become more and more present, that shifts. And suddenly the trees are the star of your story. The sky, the stars, the flowers, the mountain, the river, the ocean, all of that becomes the star of your story. And at the very deepest levels of presence, you could almost declare, I have disappeared and only God is. So that's presence. That's step one of this teaching, learning how to be present, settling into presence. If tears are arising for you, I can only tell you that is extraordinarily beautiful. And it tells me just how deeply you're, you're responding to the truth. And you can only respond to the truth from within you. You can't respond to the truth because I'm telling you, but something in you re responds and recognizes the truth because the truth exists within each one of us. But it's only available to us as we relax into presence and silence. Then the truth is ever present within us, but at the very center of our being, which is actually where God is. That's a whole different story. So that's step one of the teaching. Now, if you could just remain present as you live your life, as you have your relationships, you go to work. If you could remain basically present, fundamentally present, you don't need step two. But we humans have been lost for so long, lost in the dream, lost in the mind, thinking that's who we are, that's what our life is really about. And it's been nothing but a dream for the past many, many lifetimes. We've all been lost. The soul has been lost in this in a dream. Now we're lost in a dream until we awaken out of the dream. So step two is very simple also. It's this. Step two involves bringing conscious awareness to all the ways we're pulled out of presence. How does that happen? And it involves bringing conscious awareness to what your dream is all about. Like what, what dream are you caught in? Uh, who are you in the dream? How do you keep yourself in the dream? What do you need to let go of? to come out of the dream. And of course, we have to also deal with the ego, which is really uh, one of the main obstacles to our awakening. So there's a lot involved in step two, and I've narrowed it down to four aspects. I don't think we need to go into the four aspects right now. We can come back to it if you like. But step one of this teaching leads to presence. Step two of this teaching leads to mastery of the mind and ego. And both steps are essential for true awakening. You know, it's not enough that we're just present because the tree is present, the cow is present, the elephant is present. Everything is present on this planet except for humans. So we're called upon not only to become deeply present in the same way that a tree is present, a cow is present, or an elephant is present, or a dog or a cat, or a young child, a very young child. Like everything is present except humans. So... True awakening, awakening involves both awakening into presence and arising in mastery of your mind and ego. The trees and the cows and the elephants don't have to worry about step two, but we do. And so that's what will liberate us, the two steps together, and they go together. They're interdependent. As I relax and more and more into presence, I, it's easier for me to see what's going on in the dream, who I am in the dream, how do I get caught in the dream, etc. So it's those two together. First, presence. You know, I love this gesture, if you can see beyond my microphone. I love this gesture, and I'll tell you what it means to me, apart from the fact that it, it's prayer, it represents prayer. But just have a look at this from the past and future world of the mind we come into balance in the past and future world of the mind then we come to the center transcendent of duality and for me being present truly present is the highest form of prayer it's like whispering to god i am here now at last i am here now 
do with me as you will. That's been my basic approach for 40 years. I'm here now, do with me as you will now. Sometimes God doesn't make it clear exactly what God wants me to do, so you have to wait patiently until it becomes clear. Um, so they're the two steps of this teaching. Very briefly, I'll mention there are four aspects, four aspects to step two, and I'm just going to mention them one sentence at a time. The first is the resistance of the ego. We have to overcome the resistance of the ego. The second is, who have you become? Instead of judging or trying to fix or trying to hide who we've become in the dream, we have to be willing to own it, acknowledge it, uh, confess it and reveal it without judging it and without trying to fix yourself. The third aspect of uh, step uh, step two is the repressed feelings. We're all living with feel feelings repressed within us from the past. Now, those feelings need to be liberated, not gotten rid of, but liberated. They need uh, they need to be given their right to complete their journey through you. It's not therapy. It's allowing the feelings to complete their journey through you because a long time ago, when you were very young, we all we all made the decision to repress the feelings because they were too much for a young child. But now they're not. You can handle it upon behalf of the young child. So you just go through a process of liberating the feelings, anger, hurt, sadness, pain. Underneath that is uh, unfulfilled need and then fear. It's pretty simple. And it's not difficult. So that's uh, step two of this teaching. Oh, the fourth and final aspect of step two is to go beyond losing yourself in others. So, for example, if I have a limiting belief that um, I'm not good enough, which formed in my very early childhood. And these limiting beliefs begin as impressions, then they form into thoughts, which then get programmed into the mind as beliefs. And once, those pro once it's programmed into your mind as a belief, you're stuck with it. Uh, I'll give you an example of some of the limiting beliefs. I'm all alone. There's no one here for me. I'm separate. I'm not loved. I'm not good enough. I can't do it. It's not okay to be myself. I can't ask for what I want. What I want. I won't get what I want. I have to put up with what I don't want. I have to please others. I have to do the right thing. I could go on and on. And we can all identify with some of these limiting beliefs. And we have to be aware of them because they're filtering through and playing through into our day-to-day -day life every day. And particularly into our relationships or our sense of who we are. So, and none of it's true. That's the beautiful thing about it. As you bring the limiting beliefs to consciousness, you recognize they're not true. They're just part of the dream that formed in early childhood. So we start to recognize that. They start to lose their power over us as we settle into presence. And uh, we open into a much deeper level of love, acceptance, and compassion, which we actually bring then to every aspect of ourselves caught in the dream. Wow, did not know you could do that that concisely. That is gorgeous. Yeah, thank you. Um, so let me just... Now, if you get too present, you're not going to be able to ask me any questions. Well, That's the problem. Do, that is the realize, problem. I do I realize... Have to, I'll have to help you out with that. I, yes, I'm, ha I'm happy to glance down at some notes, but... Um, yeah, you can glance away, no problem. Yeah, let me... So, so, so <laughs> thank you first, just for that distillation. It's just, just brilliant. Um, and I just want to share with you um, the, the one aspect that really caught me when I was on my walk this morning. I thought, oh, my God, this says it so well. Um, so but just to just to orient again, Leonard's talking about two steps. The one is we become just radically present. And just we just bring ourselves present using whatever uh, whatever the senses is allowing us to see. Uh, and in that presence, we just kind of be that we don't even be, even that's too much. We're just, presence is here, presence, and that we just kind of bathe in that, we kind of marinate in that. Then we just stay curious and alert because we will be there. The intention is to be there <laughs> when the presence seems to leave and just to, to watch what it is that pulls, quote, us, the us we then think we are out of presence. We, uh, so we're very, let very, let, let yes. me interrupt just for a moment, if I may. Uh, and, and please don't take this the wrong way. Yeah. But it's very hard for people to actually 
share with others what this teaching is about because there's a tendency to go into the mind and try and describe it or communicate what the teaching is about from within the mind and it doesn't work that would be that would be uh, once someone's mind speaking to someone else's mind it actually doesn't work and it's a, it's a really of no value so uh you know, I somehow I've mastered the art, or it just happened naturally, um, where my words just come from presence. When I speak, I'm not going into my mind to speak. Now, my mind is an instrument of expression. It enables me to express, which is the real value of the mind. But um, but I'm speaking from presence. So you, to talk about this teaching, you have to talk about it from presence, not go into the mind and try and in, in a sense, summarize or make up, you know, you know what I'm saying. So yes, 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 I'm yes. just sharing that with you. For yes. What it's worth. yes, absolutely. So that, mm -hmm. so, so we have the two steps, the part that what really nailed it for me this morning is the way you put in step number two, right? When we're noticing what takes us out of presence, what takes me out of presence. When you said the second last step, <laughs> I love when you say this, the second last step in awakening is realizing our only true need is having someone be present with us. But I love that it's the it's the second to last step yes. is this need to have others be present because of course that sets up the first to last step. But I just want to give you an opportunity to talk about that second to last step because I okay. I love that juncture. Yes, and and it's 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 very um very precise, very simple, and very direct. But I'll often say this in my retreats um, when I'm running a retreat. Um, I'll encourage people to share from the chair next to me on the stage, um, go around and, and I have them first start with saying things like, I need you to love me, I need you to accept me. These are all the limiting, coming from the limiting beliefs. I need you to think I'm good enough. This is how we lose ourselves. We literally, if, if I need you to approve of me, agree with me, love me, like me, or any of that, in a very subtle way, even in this moment, in a very subtle way, I'm energetically moving away from me to you. I'm getting mixed up in you because I'm wanting you to love me or like me or approve of me, think I'm good enough. So I'm getting energetically mixed up in you. That's not good for you and it's not good for me because how can I know who I am? How can you know who you are if we're all mixed up in each other? And the truth is everyone is mixed up in each other. So you have to come back to yourself. And it begins by expressing those unnecessary needs. I need you to love me. You have to own what's there. I need you to think I'm good enough. I don't feel good enough. You've got to be willing to acknowledge that. Then you come in what I, what I call those, those, uh, uh, that energy shift is uh, the pursuit of the substitute needs. The substitute needs are, I need you to love me. The truth is I don't because if I'm present, I am love. If you're present, you are love. So why do we need to love each other? I am love. Of course I love you. How can I not? Because I am love. Of course you love me. How can you not? Because you are love. And it's actually true. The true nature of our existence is love. And we'll probably never be fulfilled until we recognize that and start to live as love in the world. So, so I'm just leading up to then I'll have people say, First, I start having them express the substitute needs. I need you to love me. I need you to accept me. I need, etc. Then I can, then I guide them to the true and original need. Actually, you don't need to love me. You don't need to accept me. You don't need to think I'm good enough, but I do need you to be present. If you're here, I can be here. That's the second last step. If you're here, I can be here. And it's okay for me to express that. Please be present. It's a very legitimate request of anyone, please be present with me, or please be present. That's the second last step. If you're here, I can be here. But then the last step is, I'm here whether you're here or not. <laughs> End of journey. End of a journey over many, many lifetimes. Who has the courage to be here, if even if you're the only one? Now, when I first awakened, in Australia, many in 1981, many years ago, I really felt like I was the only one here. It really did. Certainly, in my sphere of influence or where I would, any interaction I had with people, no one. I really was the only one here, and I was courageous enough to accept that. 
In fact, I learned very quickly, don't try and talk too much about what you've experienced or opened up into because people will just throw doubt back on you. They won't believe you. They won't accept it. So I stopped doing that. Instead, I started teaching because people have to be present in order to really get what's going on here. So the first step is to become present. And when you're present, your mind is silent. You're not interpreting what I'm saying. You're not even remembering what I'm saying. But somehow my speaking and your hearing are one. When I'm present and as I speak and you're present as you hear, it really doesn't matter who's the speaker and the hearer. <laughs> We're coming together in oneness uh, in the expression of truth. One expression of truth, the speaker and the hearer, it doesn't matter who's doing what. So when I stop speaking, then I'm present with you as you speak. So that's the second last, that's the, the last step. I'm here whether you're here or not. Who has the courage for that? You know, another thing I like to say, because I like, I like to sort of tease people a little bit, but in, in the retreats, you know, or, or wherever, I might say, I might say, um, the price of awakening is everything. And in return, you get nothing. Who's ready for that deal? Not, not the best promotional material. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually true. When I mean the price of everything, it's not, a, it's not a reference to money. It's a reference to surrendering everything you believe in, You're surrendering to believing in your past, your ideas, your thoughts, your opinions. They don't have to go away. You can still keep all your beliefs, your opinions, all of that, your concepts, as long as you no longer believe in them. <laughs> no problem. Enjoy them. As long as you know they're not true, then where is the truth? What is the truth? And I'll give you an answer to that. The truth is you fully present, present with what is here. That's it. Then whatever arises out of that is really not your business. It's God's business. But that's, that's the truth. That's as close as we get to the truth. Utterly present with what is here, experiencing what is really here in front of us, around us, uh, in this moment, right? We're free of our projections because what's happening most of the time is we're constantly projecting from our past, from our ideas, our opinions, our past experiences. We're projecting onto the present moment. So we don't really experience what is here. But the moment you're free of projections and you start to experience what's really here, it's going to start to feel and seem very much like heaven revealed on earth. And that's the truth. Where we are, this planet is actually heaven on earth. We've all been on an extraordinary journey from heaven to heaven on earth, the manifestation of the formless into the world of form, which is heaven on earth, from heaven to heaven on earth. That's the journey we've been on. But at an unconscious level, we're all unconsciously wanting to go back to where we came from, which is heaven. No, 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 that's not the outcome. You're going to finish up on heaven on earth. Then when you leave the body, yes, heaven. But then when you come back, heaven on earth. But we all got lost somewhere along the way. We got lost in this world of separation, which is the world of the mind, a world of illusion, uh, which is the dream, the world of the mind, the story. And humanity, the whole, almost the whole of humanity is literally imprisoned in this world. And you don't realize it until you, you're liberated from that prison. So in this context, the mind, the world of the mind, the dream is the prison. You're the prisoner and the, your ego is the prison warden. And it has very little intention of releasing you until you take certain steps to come into right relationship with the ego. And it'll take some time, but eventually, as you come into right relationship with the ego, it will begin to relax and release you. So I see a question on the board about that very process, about coming into right relation with the ego, about how we go from seeing it as a prison and ego as a prison warden to seeing ourselves as maybe even pushing on the door and realizing it opens from the inside. It was never locked. But I, yes, Rhoda, yes. can I throw that to you and you can read that question and follow up? Yeah, actually, I was just asking Marisol. Oh, she doesn't have much of a voice. So this question comes from Marisol. Um, and the question is, uh, can you speak a little bit more about letting go of past conditioning, which often tends to feel very sticky? Like it's not able to be let go of. Okay, there are really, 
Yeah, there were really uh, two steps involved in that, and they happened kind of simultaneously. On the one hand, you're relaxing and deepening into presence. You're becoming present. You're becoming comfortable with feeling present. You know when you're present. Right. And then at the same time, you notice these limiting beliefs or these uncomfortable feelings arising. And now here's the catch. It's from presence that everything is revealed to. It's like presence is the revealer or, or the witness to whatever is coming up within the mind. And when you're present, you are love. There's nothing you can do about it. When you're present, you literally are the energy of love. It actually has nothing to do with who or what you love. You are the love. You are the energy of acceptance in the sense that there's no judgment. Everything is what it is. You are the energy of compassion. You're empowered from within. Uh, now, it's particularly the energy of love, acceptance, and compassion. That's the energy you bring to the ego. It's like shifting your relationship with the ego. There are so many teachings on our planet, particularly spiritual teachings and religions, that basically condemn the ego and tell you the ego is the enemy. Uh, and, um, and when you awaken, if you can only become enlightened, you'll get rid of the ego. That is such a false and, and unhelpful teaching. No, you're not going to get rid of the ego. No one, including Buddha or Jesus, has ever been able to uh, get rid of the ego. And there's a reason for that. The one trying to get rid of the ego is the ego itself. It's a trick. Presence gets rid of nothing. Presence says, hello, ego, there you are, I see you, and I love you too. And slowly, slowly, the ego will relax. It will take time because the ego will test you. The ego is waiting for the truth. In fact, the ego is programmed. Again, we're getting a little mystical here, but I'm sure you guys are okay with that. The ego is actually programmed by God to surrender only to the true master arising from within. A lot of us have gone down the path of surrendering to the outer master, the guru, and that's okay. It's not a bad step to take, but sooner or later you have to come back to yourself and realize, no, no, the true master arising from within. Only then will the ego relax and surrender the reins of control and allow you to be more and more fully present and live more and more in presence. Um, so uh, what is the true master, we might ask? Well, it's very simple. It's you in presence. It's the I am that you are. It's the I am presence, which is that dimension of you that is of this moment and only of this moment. the true master. Now, the ego will test you, and its test is very interesting because the ego is programmed to know that the true master is without judgment. That's just a given. The true master is without judgment, and also God is without judgment. So God and the true master presence, presence is without judgment. So the ego will try and trick you or test you by trying to get you involved in judgment. And every time you fail the test, the ego says, not the true master, no deal. It's a bit like deal or no deal, no deal. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, But sooner or later, it's possible to pass the ego's test. And I'll tell you how to pass the ego's test of judgment. It's not like stopping judgment for arising. You certainly don't want to be judging judgment if it arises. It's as simple as judging, that's all, judging. Or if you're blaming, blaming. If you're guilty, guilty. You don't do anything with it other than acknowledge it and name it, call it out. Judging, I see your judgment, I love you too, and then let it go. And slowly, slowly, it'll all relax. Slowly, slowly, the dream, the story, the dream will begin to relax and release you. But there are unhealed parts of the dream. I'm showing you with my hands right now. There are unhealed parts of the dream, a lot often from childhood, it could be from past lives, that have you in its grip and it won't release you because it's not complete yet. It's not healed. So sometimes we have to go into the dream and heal this so it will relax and release us, which is very much a part of this teaching as well. Um, <clears throat> but at the end of the day, the ultimate outcome is we're just present, we're just here in a relaxed way. Sometimes being present is very ordinary. That has to be okay. Sometimes presence suddenly opens up into the extraordinary and it reveals its hidden treasures. And I can assure you the hidden treasures are truly, truly amazing. And, and it, as I said, it, the hidden treasures basically uh, uh, um, 
are associated with the revealing of heaven on earth. Beautiful. Thank you, Leonard. Uh, that, uh, Marisol just also wanted to say thank you very much. That really helped answer her question. So thank you. I know a couple of people in the room were having the same question. So as I hear you speaking about that, one of the scenes that comes to mind, um, you speak in Liberating Jesus about the crucifixion and about the fall of Christ from the conscious to the unconscious. Christ consciousness, one with God, mm -hmm. to, to, the, to the same level of consciousness that we're all caught in. Mm -hmm. and, or worse. Or worse, yes. Yeah. And in your description, you speak so beautifully about the what was it that caused Jesus to be in a place where he basically is beckoning to God, why did you forsake me? Wow. Which as you're explaining right now, just it can't happen. It only happens as a result of our falling from. Well, it might have been part of God's plan as well, because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, this is a little provocative, but let's just say for a moment that um, the mission of Jesus upon planet Earth as a direct messenger of God, right? Um, it failed because people couldn't hear the real message. The whole point of his journey upon planet Earth was that the presence of God within him, the level of love that was flowing through him and from him, should have been enough just to wake us up. But we, we at that time and still today, we're not ready. We can't do it because because of our projections. So everyone projected onto Jesus. And what I mean by that is when he was close to you and maybe talking to you, you felt this incredible love or you felt the presence of God. But then when he walked away, maybe he walked to the next, you know, over, over the hill or something, you didn't feel it like that in the same way. So it's natural you would make the assumption that, oh, it's coming from him. When he comes close to me, I feel it. When he walks away, I don't. It must be coming from him. That was the big mistake. And Jesus should have been a little bit more careful. When anybody said to him, I love you, he should have made sure they said, because I am love. In other words, it's not possible for, for anyone to love Jesus other than from the love within them. It's not possible to feel the presence of God other than from the presence of God within you. So it's all within us. And what's happened with Christianity is we've projected everything out and completely distorted his teaching. In my view, I have Jesus at a much higher level than where the Christians have him. And he was a true messenger for us. Even the Lord's Prayer is just an amazing message to us. Uh, and, I, and that's in the play as well where I talk about, I break down the Lord's Prayer and into what it really means. Uh, in our current terminology or language. Um, well, so, if you're willing, I would love for you to break that down for us here because that that part of the movie just touched me so much. Okay. That direction. Um, well, I won't go through it all, but let's just start with give us this day our daily bread. That's in the Lord's Prayer. Now, what does he do? That's really a clue. He's saying... Don't go too far into the future worrying about your bread in the future. Don't go, you, you'll disconnect from presence. You'll get yourself lost. Just ask for bread for today. Then you won't get so lost. Just even better, just ask for bread for right now. Are you hungry in this moment? God, I'm hungry in this moment. Give me some bread. That would bring it even closer. But he was giving us a clue. Give a, don't go too far into the future. Focus on now or at least on today. Don't get lost in the future. Then it's, um, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Well, that's really just a, a expressing the, the power of forgiveness to release us into the present moment. Um, don't get caught up. Uh, Jesus also said in another area, he said, whosoever is uh, angry with his brother, first reconcile with your brother, then bring the gift to the altar. Now, what is the gift you bring to the altar, the altar of God? What do you, what can we bring? What is the gift we can bring to God? In fact, it's the only gift we can offer God. And the truth is, it's the only gift God wants. 
or has been waiting for from the beginning of time, and that is the gift of your own presence. That is such a precious gift. And in return, everything will, will return the, the experience of presence multiplied by many times. You bring the gift of your own presence to the altar and see what happens. Now, you can't bring the gift to the altar if it's contaminated. You're still angry with your brother or you're still hurt by your sister or your uncle or your friend or you have needs that have never been fulfilled. So first reconcile with your brother or your sister or your aunt. Apologize. Doesn't matter who's right or wrong. Release the past. Then you can be present in a very pure way. Take care of, of what's going on in the dream. Re resolve it quickly. It doesn't have to take long. If if you're angry at once someone, well, forgive them. Let it go. Come back to presence. If they're angry at you, it doesn't matter if they're right or wrong, ask for forgiveness. I'm so sorry. Which is true. You don't want to see anybody hurt. So release the past, complete the past, resolve the past, then come to presence and bring that gift to the altar. So, um, you know, because I, as I said earlier, when you're present, you are the energy of love, acceptance and compassion. It's very, very true. But that's the energy you bring to the ego, to the inner child, the little girl or boy you once were, uh, to the limiting beliefs themselves, you bring the energy of love, acceptance, and compassion. Um, to the repressed feelings, you have to come into right relationship with every aspect of who you've become in the dream or whatever's going on in the dream. If judgment arises, bring the energy of love. Be friendly. You see, presence is absolute. Is very, very friendly. So even if you have a thought arising, you weren't intending to think, but there's a thought arising, be friendly to that thought. Don't try and reject it or judge it or push it away. Don't see yourself as a failure. Just be friendly. Hello, thought. I see you. And then let it go. Judgment is, hello, judgment. So you're friendly from presence. You're a witness. You're a friendly witness. It's not being friendly to judge and try and change something about yourself. That's not friendly. Friendly is I see you. I'm aware of you. Thank you. I love you too. I, because I am love. And uh, slowly, slowly, things start to change all by themselves. You actually don't have to do much other than be present and take responsibility for all the ways you're pulled out of presence or who you are when you're, when you're caught in the dream, who have you become. Because who you are in the dream is ab actually radically different than the truth of who you are. Who are you in the dream? Well, we're full of limiting beliefs, judgments, control issues, uh, blame, resentment, anger, insecurity, uncertainty, and we all are plagued by a very subtle and unconscious le a feeling of being separate. Almost everything that we do in our lives is to escape that feeling of being separate. So what we have to do is own, acknowledge, confess all of this. Reveal it. As Jesus said, all that is hidden shall be revealed. Everything that's hidden within your unconscious mind about yourself, reveal it all with love, acceptance, and compassion. And then everything will start to change all by itself because you're opening into love, acceptance, compassion, power, truth, oneness, and freedom. And so that just starts to automatically, organically start to change your life. Because all these qualities of presence are now flowing into your day-to-day -day life. You're not doing anything. You're just different. You've opened up to something. You're more loving. You're more accepting. You're more compassionate. That changes things. That's gorgeous. Thank you. The question that is coming in right now is, uh, I heard you speak about not denying anger or hate or judging my enemy. And what I think I hear you saying right now is to be present with that, with as much presence as I can muster, because that is loving it. Is that no, if how you address if those things? No, if you're present, you are love. There's nothing else you need to know. You are love. So the only question is, can the love that you are in presence respond to and relate to and identify and be a witness to who, whatever's going on within the dream, who you are in the dream, what's happening within the dream. You know, within the, the dream, it's a, it's a little bit shocking, but technically speaking, if I was to accurately define the dream, what is the dream? It is actually everything outside of this moment. But much of the dream is benign. It's okay. 
you're going for a walk, you know you're walking to the supermarket. So in that way, you're involved in the future because you know where you're walking to. Well, that's okay. That's benign. Technically, it's still the dream, but it's very benign. So no problem. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your life. But don't. Get, but there are aspects of the dream that will filter through or penetrate through or get triggered. And now you're, no, now you're caught in the dream. It's no longer just the world of time. Now you're caught in the dream and the dream is kind of screwing up your experience of life all these limiting beliefs from the past, the judgments you have of yourself and others, all of these things need to be brought to consciousness with love, acceptance, and compassion. Now, one of the things, we're going to go to another level here. Another thing that uh, I love to say in my retreats, um, because I've been teaching for many years about being caught in the dream. So I have everyone, I just say, okay, now let's all be very, very honest. There might be a hundred people in the retreat. Let's all be very honest. Who is willing to confess that they've been living a large part of their life in the dream? And of course, if everyone puts their hand up and uh, good, they've all confessed they've been living in the dream. They've been living in the dream, their dream. Then I say, not true. Everybody looks shocked. What are you talking about? Not your dream. Then whose dream is it? It's not your dream. Why? It's not your dream. Then whose dream is it? It's the little girl's dream that you once were. It's her dream or the little boy's dream. It's his dream. What happened to him? The little boy, it's their dream. So why have you been living in the little child's dream? which is what you've been doing. We've all been doing that. And in order to awaken, you have to come out of that dream. Then you can bring love, acceptance, and compassion to the child from presence because you're no longer caught in the child's dream. We need to get out of the child's dream and then relate to the child with incredible compassion and love and acceptance. No trying to change them. Just, I hear you, I see you, I love you so much. There's a... a Part of this teaching is um, is the inner child meditation, which really accomplishes what we're describing now. From presence, you bring the most beautiful, loving energy to the child that you once were. And it literally brings that child through a healing as the child comes closer and closer to you and realizes, because the only thing that child ever wanted from the from the moment of conception is for others to be truly present with it. That's the dilemma of, of human existence. We live in a world where no one is present. I'm not blaming anyone. It's just the truth. No one is present. And you don't know until you become present that you haven't been present. You don't know until you come out of the dream that you've been caught in a dream. And the truth is we're all been, we've all been caught in the dream. So one of the ways, it's, it's not your dream, it's the little child's dream. So how would you relate to a little child with that dream? with those limiting beliefs, with those repressed feelings, with those beliefs, I'm not good enough, I can't do it, I'm not loved, I'm all alone, I'm separate. How would you relate to that child as an awakened eternal being of love, one with God? How would you relate to that child? That's how you. That's that's what you do in the meditation. And it can be very, very healing. Because the, the wounded child is at the core of our dream. It's, it's, it's the foundation of, our, of the dream that we're all caught in. And, um, yep. So I would, I would love it, I, if you're willing, to, to, to lead us, give us, I don't know if it's appropriate to give us a little taste of that right now, to, to lead us into that. But I feel like that's like just a perfect setup. Um, so that, that it's feel? a little bit. It's a little bit long. I can give you the bones of it, but I wouldn't lead you through it, right? Right. Okay. Because but I, I, I'll case. give you the bones of it. But um, so it's basically first becoming very present. You cannot even begin this meditation unless you're very deeply present and you feel present. You feel you know you're present, and when you're present, you have to know that when you're present, you literally are the energy of love. And I'm not talking about the love we normally experience. I'm talking about divine love, the, one, the love that emanates from God and presence and you when you're present. So it's that level of love. It's a different level of love. It begins by, by saying, um, well, I lead people into it and guide people into it. But um, it begins by me leading. It's me leading the participants, those people in the group, I give them the words to go to, to, uh, to say to the child. Okay, so it begins. We're going to do it, okay? But just very simply. Um, 
my beloved child, you're speaking to the child that you once were, I'm so sorry. I've been lost in your dream. I have to come out of your dream so I can be here for you, so I can be present for you. I am here now, and I am love. And I love you so much. I'm sending all the love that I am to you. I'm sending it back through time. I'm from your future, and I've come back to rescue you. And I'm sending you all the love. You are so beautiful. You are so sweet. You are so innocent. I love you so much. And you take your time sharing that, and the child starts to sense and feel those words. If you like, sweetheart, you can come closer to me. And just have the sense that the child coming closer and closer to you. If you like, sweetheart, you can sit on my knee and I will hold you. And the child sits on your knee. And then there's just a continuing of beautiful expressions of love towards the child. You are so beautiful. You are so sweet. You are so innocent. I love you so much. I'm, I'm here now. I'm present. And I can see that you are present too. Because the child's natural state is presence. It's just come into a world where no one is present. I'm here now. And um, so that continues for a while with beautiful words of, of just reassurance, love, you're safe now, I'm here. Uh, and then the concluding part of it would be, I want to be very honest with you, sweetheart. The child's very happy to hear that. I want to be very honest with you. I'm present now, but I can't promise you I'll always be present but I'm learning how to be more and more present. Will you be patient with me as I learn how to be more present? Now, in all the years I've been teaching and sharing this meditation, I've never heard the word no, ever. It's always yes. Yes, I'll be patient. The child is so happy because someone is here now, you. In fact, you're the only one, you in presence, you're the only one that can heal the child because the child is looking everywhere for someone. It, it's pursuing the substitute needs, love, acceptance, I'm good enough, all of that stuff. But the child has forgotten the one true and original need, which is I just need you to be present. It's forgotten because no one's present. You can't find it out there in the world not the level of presence that will heal the child. So suddenly you appear in presence. I am the one you've been waiting for. It's so healing. And that's a meditation that can be done every night for a week as you're lying in bed before you go to sleep. Just do a short version of that. Send the child some love. I love you so much. Very healing for the child. And the child is the foundation of the dream. As you heal the child in this way, the dream relaxes. And you start to recognize, wow, it's not really my dream. Why am I identifying with this dream? It's the little child's dream. Then who am I? Ah, I am the one who is here now. That's your true nature. It's, your, it's the truth of who you are. The one who is here now. In fact, I can sum up this entire teaching in one sentence, which is pretty impressive in my view. One sentence for the whole teaching. And here it is, one sentence. I'll add a couple of sentences after, but this is the one sentence. In truth, there is no life outside of this moment. If any of us can recognize the truth of that simple statement, it's almost inevitable you will awaken. Because everything outside of this moment is part of the dream. I'm not saying the dream has to go away. I'm just saying recognize the difference between when you're in the dream and when you're present. Simple. In fact, let me give you, share with you uh, two which I think are fundamental questions that can wake anyone up. Now, these questions are to, to be applied in a day-to-day -day manner when, as you're living your life. At any moment, you can apply these questions. You can choose to remember the question. So the first question is, it's so simple. But you have to know presence first, and then it's a support for presence as you live your life. Here's the first question. And there are two, ver two variations of this first question. The first is, you look around, what's in the here and now? But you look around the tree, the flower, the sound I hear, the movement of my body, what's in the here and now? So you literally... Without words, are preferably, you're recognizing and acknowledging in presence what else is here with you. You might go for a walk, you see a leaf moving on the tree. Be present with it. 
it's it's of the present moment. It can't move in the past or future is moving in the present moment. So what's in the here and now? Another alternative question uh, is what's happening right now? What's happening? Oh, the leaf is moving in the tree. That's all. Or I'm walking. That's it. What's happening? I'm sitting in a chair. I'm looking out through these eyes. What's happening in this moment of now, right now? They're the first, that's the first question. What's in the here and now? What's happening right now? The second question is what's happening in the dream? That's all. So you're distinguishing between the two. What's happening right now? What's happening in the dream? So if there's something going on in the dream, like judgment is arising or you feel hurt or you're feeling not good enough or whatever it is, you just acknowledge it. Oh, not good enough. Oh, judging, judging, judging is arriving, arising. It's too simple. And slowly, slowly, the distinction between what's in the here and now, what's happening right now, and what's happening in the dream will become so clear, such a so, so different as an experience. And you can find out for yourself which one feels better and then choose that. And that's a moment, basically, that's something that's available to us every moment of our lives. Now, God's going to speak to us through through me. God's going to speak. God's going to say to each, each and every one of us, beloved, because God likes to call us beloved. Beloved, which world do you choose to live in? The world of the present moment, the truth of life, where I am the creator, says God, or do you choose the world of your mind, the dream, a world of separation and illusion, but there you get to be the creator. Which world do you choose? Now, when we come to that fundamental choice, I call it the fundamental choice at the very heart of free will, because we've been given free will to choose, make whatever choices we like, but there are consequences that inevitably flow from the choices we make. But this, what I'm sharing with you, is at the very heart of free will. It's like God gave us free will to see how long it would take us to surrender it. Thy will be done, not my will. And that's what naturally arises as you become present. Now, of course, you're a co-creator with God. Of course, you're creating your own experience of, of life. Um, to the best that you can, but not from within the mind. It's a different experience of yourself, who you are. So that's at the very heart of free will. Which world do you choose to live in? The world of now or the dream? The eternal world of now. You see, the present moment is the doorway. It's the doorway through to the eternal now. It's the doorway through to the redemption of oneness. It's the doorway through to oneness with God. It's the doorway through to the revealing of heaven on earth. Now, when I speak of the revealing of heaven on earth, say you become, Rhoda, say you become so utterly present that suddenly it opens up for you and you know this is heaven on earth. You just know it. You don't think about it. You just know instantly. Wow. There's really nothing you can say other than wow or thank you. Uh, but you know instantly. Now, here's the catch. Just because it awakened within your conscious, consciousness doesn't mean it's awakened in anyone else's. It awakens within your own consciousness. Something happens within your consciousness that reveals heaven on earth, that reveals the presence of God in all things present. You know, I'm always talking about God, so it's probably helpful if I define what I mean by God for, for your audience, because it has nothing to do, do with religion, and it has nothing to do with belief in God. In fact, I say that to believe in God is an obstacle to knowing God because God is transcendent of our beliefs. Belief is a function of the mind. And what's happened within the mind in the dream is that we don't like this feeling of being separate, so we created God in our image to comfort us within the dream. That's like almost an, an abomination, because the opposite is, opposite is true. The truth is we are created in the image of God. That means all the inherent qualities of God are in you. And that's the simple truth. But when you go into the mind and you believe in God, you're disconnecting from the truth of God. So what do I mean by the word God? For me, it's very simple. God is the silent presence at the very heart of all things present. God is real. God is here now. We could almost say God is the present moment revealing itself to you in this moment. So God is real, God is here now, but we are not. 
We've disconnected. We've gone too far into the past and future world of the mind. We've discon disconnected from the truth that is ever present and that is only really available to us, not from within the mind, not from belief or understanding. Understanding is a function of the mind. You can't understand presence. You can't believe in presence. You can't even think about pre the present moment. To think about the present moment, you have to leave it. So uh, it's just a silent inner knowing. So for, for those of us who are ready, we're going to be trading belief and understanding for inner knowing that is ever available to us. And one who is truly awake lives and dwells in a state of not knowing, but knowing is ever available. It just arises from the center of our being, which is exactly where God is. You know, I've developed a lot of med different meditations um, to help people really experience what I'm saying, including the God meditation, but we're not going to do that here. Uh, but, um, you know, it's pretty amazing. Uh, almost every time I do a private session, before I'm finished, if it feels right, I don't, don't do it with everyone, but I'll say, would you like to be introduced to God? The answer is usually yes, and it's pretty amazing how easy and simple that is because God exists within each one of us. We're not separate from God. Only when we go too far into the dream do we separate ourselves. And it goes all the way back to the very beginning of time. The very moment time began is when we separated from God because we made, there was a shift from oneness into duality and we got completely lost within duality. We don't know how to be in duality because of judgment. And because we're so involved in judgment, we've never been able to bring duality into balance that would bring the, the doorway, the present moment doorway, open within us. So hopefully that's clear. That is abundantly clear and just incredibly beautiful. And I hear what you're saying. The more present I get, the less, the less questions show up. So I know. Well, you're going beyond understanding and you don't even need to remember what I'm saying because if you're present as I say it and I'm speaking truth and you're hearing truth and you can only hear truth, you can't hear truth other than from the truth within you. That's the only way you can know if I'm speaking truth. It's from the truth within you. But if the ego and the mind are too strong, then you can't even hear the truth coming through. You're disconnected from the truth within you. But you can only know if I'm speaking truth from the truth within you. You can't receive anything from me, but my words and my presence can touch that dimension within you, the, that awakened dimension within you, which suddenly awakens and is here. And the question is, for how long is it here? That's why we need step two. <clears throat> That's why we need step two. <laughs> to help us arise in mastery of the mind and ego so we're no longer pulled out of presence involuntarily. So that we, we can play in the dream. We don't have to be deeply present all the time. We can play in the dream, but in a way that doesn't get us lost in the dream. We can enjoy living in the world of time. Of course, we're here to enjoy ourselves. There are two reasons we're here on planet Earth, two real reasons. The first is to liberate ourselves from the dream and, uh, and awaken into the truth of who we are, the truth of oneness, the truth of love, the truth of God, the truth of heaven on Earth. That's why we're really here. But then there's an equal, there's a second reason we're here, and I'm fine if this is the only thing that gets accomplished. We don't need the, the first one. The second reason we're here is to enjoy ourselves here, to be happy to enjoy, to not be conflicted and disturbed by all these limiting beliefs and self-judgments and self-doubts and lack of freedom and, and all of that. Just to be here, to be happy, to enjoy your life and to, to feel free to be yourself. Now, of course, presence dramatically helps you accomplish that. But even by itself, without the presence, I'd say no problem. Just if you're going to be here, enjoy yourself. And don't make life more complicated than it needs to be. Because we're really good at doing that, aren't we? Making life complicated. And the beautiful, the funny thing is, I find that's very humorous, but the ego will help you to, to solve a thousand problems, but immediately it will create a new, a thousand new problems. It never ends. Never. The dream never ends. So come out of the dream and know the truth of who you are. Even if it's for a little while, even if, if it, in the beginning stages, even if you're just present for two or three moments, 
or two or three seconds or even 30 seconds, that's okay because when in between the thoughts is this beautiful deep silence. As your mind becomes silence, you recognize between the thoughts there is silence. And then as the mind slowly starts to become silent, the thoughts slow down and stop, a much deeper level of silence begins to open up from the center of your being. And this level of silence that I'm referring to is infinite and eternal silence. Pure consciousness. Pure consciousness beyond form and beyond content. You can't even think about that. There's no way to think about it, but you can experience it. Pure consciousness beyond form, beyond content, an eternal silent presence of pure consciousness. I am that eternal silent presence of pure consciousness. I am that. I am. You see, at some point you have to own it. Yes, God, I am here. I am that. But you can't own it with the ego. That's the problem. The ego can't wait to run off with this. The ego loves, the ego wants to be enlightened. It's the ultimate accomplishment for the ego. Then everyone will sit at your feet, you know. Um, that's why we really should, we should be trying to get past the, the old paradigm of the guru. And everyone should realize the guru is within. Now, I can play the role of guide and, and instructor, if you like, or my presence can support your presence in, until, until you're established. But we've got to get past that projection onto the guru or onto the teacher or onto the master. I don't let anyone project onto me. If they, you know, if they say to me, I love you, and many people tell me all the time, I love you, I always say, that's because you are love. Thank you. I might be lovable, but you are love. There's no way to love me other than from the love within you. If you see, if you feel God in my presence, the only way you can feel God in my presence is from God within you. Don't project it onto me. Now, the catch is that if you want to own all of that as you, right, this is who I am, then you have to own the negative stuff as well. Yes, I'm a blamer. Yes, I'm judgmental. Yes, I don't think I'm good enough. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, I'm this and that and the other. You've got to own it all. No more projection. It's all me, not you. Even if it is you, it doesn't matter. It's still me. So I take responsibility for myself. Anything that's triggered within me, everything that arises, it's me, not you. Even if somebody's being really nasty, it's me, not you. I mean, I can sell, I can walk away. I don't have to accept it. But deep down, I have to look within myself what's going on. One of the keys to awakening is to embrace true responsibility. And that means I'm responsible for whether I'm present or not. If I get triggered, I'm responsible for the fact that I've got all these repressed feelings still repressed within me from the past that can be triggered. If I'm still lost in belief, well, I'm responsible for that. Uh, if thoughts are arising, I'm responsible for my thoughts. If judgment arises, that's my judgment. I need to take responsibility for it, not in a negative, nasty way or even a serious way. It's playful. It has to be playful. Nobody awakens unless they're playful. Nobody awakens if they take themselves seriously or if they take enlightenment seriously. It's It has to be friendly and playful. Well, there you are, judgment. I see you. God, did you notice that? I did. You're not rejecting it. You're not believing in it. You're just playing with it. It's like the master playing with children, you know, up here, you know. Yes, very good, very good. Good try, ego, good try. Because the ego's job is to keep you in the dream. That's the ego's job. You might not be aware of this, or I'm sure you're not, but I've just finished my latest book is all about the ego. It's a book about the ego. In fact, the title, it's, it's not out yet. It'll be out early next year. The working title, in fact, you can give me your opinion. I'm quite, quite happy to receive your opinion, but I'm thinking of naming the book Life Beyond the Ego, A New Beginning for Humanity. Do we like that? That's so beautiful. that's pretty... That's pretty powerful, and it's what we need. It doesn't mean we get rid of the ego, but we recognize it that we can function in present. When you're present, there's no ego. But it's there in the dream waiting for your return, and it's very skilled at pulling you back to where it wants you until it can't anymore. But uh, So we have to go through a whole process of coming into right relationship with the ego until a, there comes a point where the ego will very gently and gradually and with honor it will surrender and it will take on a new role in your life. 
you know, uh, its role currently until we awaken is it's your protector. It's actually the ego is your friend and protector in a painful world where no one is present. It came into your life at a very, very young age. Don't worry, sweetheart. You're too young to handle all of this. The first thing we're going to do to take care of you, says the ego, well, I'm going to help you repress all these difficult feelings. You're too young to deal with them. So that's the beginning of the repressed feelings. And from the ego's perspective, it would like to keep the feelings repressed forever so you don't have to feel them because the ego loves you. It's trying to help you and protect you. Um, so that's its true role. Now, if you start to get present and you come out of the dream, the ego doesn't know what's going on. First of all, your mind is silent when you're present, or it can be silent. The ego doesn't know what's going on because it's used to a world of non-stop thinking. It thinks it's dying or disappearing. So it's very skilled at pulling you back. Then you, you tell the ego, it's okay, you're not dying or disappearing, you're okay. Uh, uh, just relax. No, no deal, says the ego. Why not? Well, even if I'm not dying or disappearing, when you're present, I'm not there and I'm not in control. Well, why do you need to be in control, sweetheart? See, I call the ego sweetheart. Why do you need to be in control? Um, well, so I can protect you. If I'm not there, who's going to protect you? Yes, ego. Yes, yes, yes. But if I'm present, there's nothing to protect me against. Everything you've been protecting me against is from my, my past. In the present moment, there's nothing to protect me against. Why don't you relax and allow me to be fully present? Nope, no deal. Why not, ego? Why not? Well, I'll be out of a job. If there's nothing to protect you against, what am I going to do? Ah, I'll give you a new job, ego. I'll make you my assistant life manager in the world of time. Ooh, that sounds fairly important, says the ego. And you're so good at it. You keep my appointments. You remember things that I don't remember because I'm an eternal being. And we'll live a, a, a happy and joyful and harmonious coexistence in the world of time. But every now and then, ego, don't be surprised if I just become so present that all thought dissolves and I'm utterly here in the oneness, one with God. But what about me, says ego? Do I get left behind when you go to God, when you're one with God? Ah, that's the secret. I'm not revealing the secret. I was going to say, wait, wait, what are no, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> This is a, a secret unknown on planet Earth. So you're going to have to wait for the book. So the question in the chat is, when does the book come out again? <laughs> uh, probably around February next year is my guess. Fabulous. I mean, it's, the book is finished. I just have to go through the, the whole process of getting it printed and published and all that sort of stuff. So I apologize for withholding that secret. <laughs> That was too good, though. I just, I have to say, I just adore the playful, childlike approach to the ego because the defensiveness just you can't defeat it. The, no, the <laughs> ego thrives. The ego thrives on the energy of judgment, rejection, and struggle. It needs you to believe in that and, and do that. It needs you to oppose the ego so it can keep you in it under its control, so it can keep you in the dream where all the pain is. It doesn't want you coming out of the dream, but there does come a point where the ego will surrender and relax and be happy for you because its, it's, it's, it's existence is radically improved by your presence if you're not rejecting or judging it. Don't worry, ego, even when I'm fully present, even when I'm fully awake and enlightened, I'm not going to abandon you. You'll have a continuing role in my life. I am an eternal being. I don't even know my name without you, ego which is true. I don't even know my name with, without you. I can't function in the world of time without you, ego, which is also true. And I'm speaking from experience, direct experience. You cannot, at, at the very deepest levels of presence, you can't function in the world of time. You can't have relationships. You can't go to work. So you have to find the model that we need at this stage of human evolution is a model where I can awaken to the very deepest levels of awakened presence oneness, love, truth, God, heaven on earth. But at the same time, I've mastered the art of flow. F-L-O-W. I can flow easily into the, into the world of time and play in the world of time without disconnecting fully from presence. And I can flow easily back into the deepest levels of presence. So I can be present, deeply present anytime I want, or I can be playing in the world of time. I can still go to work 
I mean, I have a friend. He's actually visiting me here now. He's got an. He's been with me for quite a while. He's a beautiful, beautiful man, very present, very awake. He has an incredibly busy corporate job, really busy and kind of up there in terms of you know position. He's a, he's amazing. He can he can manage that and yet never disconnect really from presence. He doesn't get caught up in all the shenanigans going on at work. Presence really empowers you and frees you in a way that people don't know about until they become present. And not only just become present, but there's a whole process to, to become fundamentally established in presence. And when that happens, there's a very important shift that occurs. As you follow these two steps, one morning you might wake up and this shift has occurred. You, you're not even, don't even know what it is, but you know there's a shift. Because before awakening, before this moment, your life, your world was, was lived from within the mind, the past and future. Uh, and um, that's all you've ever known, and that's all we've ever known, we humans. That's what we know, right? That's the world we live in. That's our home. So you might have moments of really beautiful, deep presence. You might see the birds soaring across the sky or the beautiful sunset. They're moments of deep presence when you feel that beauty and that joy and that that glory of the moment, right? But it's not long before you pull, pull back into the, the dream, the mind, because that's your home. It's like there's an elastic band attached to you. And it's, it's pulling you back into the dream very quickly, very easily. But when this shift occurs, suddenly you have a new home. Your home is no longer the world of the mind or the dream. Your home is the world of now. So you can still think, but now you're thinking consciously, intentionally. But when you finish thinking, the rubber band is now pulling you in, back in the opposite direction, straight back to presence, because that's your new home. So you live, your home where you live is in the world of now, but you can play in the world of time, no problem. Enjoy your life, have a good life, have a happy life, but never disc, never, you don't go so far into the dream that you disconnect from the present moment, from the truth. And then there's really no problem. That's a much better model, this model of flow between the two different dimensions without getting lost in the dream. It's a much better model for hum humanity at this stage of our evolution than the old model where you had this big samadhi type awakening and then you go and live in a cave somewhere or an ashram forms around you. That's great for the few that wake up to that level, but it's not good for, the, for everyone else. We all need to awaken. We all need to make that next step in human evolution. And, you know, the tortoise was smart enough to grow a shell as a part of its evolution. And it's been very successful. It's protected the, the tortoise since the days of, of the, uh, the, the turtle or the tortoise, since the days of the dinosaur. But we humans are so slow. We don't need a shell on our back, although that one wouldn't hurt. <laughs> but um, we need to evolve in consciousness. That's the next stage of human evolution. And if we want to survive upon this planet, we better wake up quickly as a species. And the only trouble is we've been so distracted. We were on the right track for a while. We've become so distracted distracted by all the politics, the economy, the share market, everyone's so distracted that we've almost forgotten that we need to heal this planet very quickly. We need to stop uh, mess, you know, really crapping all over this planet. We need to come into harmony with our Mother Earth. That's what we should be doing. And, it, we, and the only way to come into harmony with Earth, with this planet, is through presence. There's no other way. Well, there are other ways you can, even from within the dream, you can be very thoughtful and act with integrity and honesty and really care and make make a, a difference. But the real difference occurs when we as a species awaken. You know, in our personal lives, my experience is this. Very few people are willing to awaken or even interested in awakening out of a happy dream. Nobody wants to wake up out of a happy dream. So what choice does God have other than to make your dream more and more difficult, more and more miserable, more and more suffering? Because maybe, just maybe you might choose to wake up out of a miserable dream. The trouble is that very few of us do. We stay in the miserable dream trying to improve it. That's our mistake. No, no, don't improve your dream. Wake up out of your dream because none of it's true. I'll give you an example of someone who experienced that. Eckhart Tolle. His dream was really miserable. And he could have either committed suicide or, or opened up out of the dream. That's about it. Awakened out of the dream. And in his case, he awakened out of the dream. 
and and suicide is just another avenue of escape we've got so many avenues of escape from the the pain of living in a world where no one is present even watching tv thinking too much all these things are ways we escape from the pain of living in a world where no one is present and it doesn't occur to us to become present ourselves and then see what happens That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Leonard. Um, I, I see we have about five minutes left. I want to invite um, our friends that are here to uh, take advantage of this moment, if you feel so called. See if anyone has a question for Leonard. Rhoda and I have plenty, so there's no, 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 there's no need there. But the no opportunity. Pressure. No, no pressure. And, But the opportunity is here, and I just want to, I just really want to extend that. Well, most people don't want to raise their hands, so I think you should just go ahead and uh, and go wherever you want to go with it. I'm just watching. I can see everyone. I don't see any hands raised. Are there any hands raised? No, I don't see any. And we shouldn't put expectation. We're, we're yeah. not putting an expectation onto anyone. No. Because everyone's no. free to be themselves. You want to raise your hand? Great. If you don't, no problem. That's how it works. It, or somebody has their hand up. Wonderful. Uh, Bojana, and Bojana is the one that introduced us to you. So this is a, oh. this is a perfect question. Bojana, how are you? Bojana. Thank you. Hello, Leonard. Hi. Could, I know we have very little time left, but uh, with your uh, gorgeous uh, capability to be so succinct, can you speak to the void in your book, Bridging Heaven and Earth? You have a meditation about the void, going yes, into yes. the void. The emptiness meditation. The emptiness meditation. Well, you Can know, you we say uh, something to that. I'll just speak about it very briefly because our time is almost up. But um, it's very, very important. This is one of the most important aspects of, of the teaching and of awakening. Deep within each one of us, no exceptions, deep within each one of us, there is a tiny little point within us, within the body, within the energy body and the physical body, which is that point where we feel separate where we we feel it we experience it as a kind of emptiness and we don't like it we don't want emptiness because it feels like loneliness we don't want to feel that so we've all been desperately trying developing all sorts of methods and mannerisms and all sorts of ways to avoid and escape from this feeling of emptiness that exists within us it can be very small but it's there and um so what I will do, and this comes often when I'm working with someone either in a private session or in a group or retreat, it'll often come up, they'll talk about that feeling of emptiness. And whenever that happens, I love it because uh, then I'll introduce everyone to the emptiness meditation. And the first thing I do is ask everyone, please point to where the emptiness is located in your body. Point now. And it's amazing how everyone can point. Both of you should point now. Where is it? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, Rhoda, that's not usually where it is. It's where you're pointing. What's your, is that Anne? Anne. And I'm not, I don't even mean to make you wrong, Rhoda. I'm just saying, almost without fail, it goes straight to the heart center. And then what, what I do is I do the empty med, emptiness meditation with them, which is basically I just uh, have them very present, very, their eyes closed, and I have, them, I have the energy of emptiness spreading through their body. And I gently guide that process where it spreads through the body, down the legs, into the front of the body, uh, the back of the body, the arms, the, the hands, uh, the head, the face, everything. So the whole body is gradually being filled with this emptiness. Then I have them say, I am not empty. They repeat the words from presence. I am not empty. I am full. I am full of nothing. You see, nothingness is fullness, not emptiness. I am full of nothing or nothingness. And just that by itself just suddenly transforms it into the deepest level of peace. That's what we've been running from all this time. So many lifetimes, we've all been trying to escape this feeling of being separate because it feels painful, it feels lonely. I won't survive if I'm separate. We don't like it. So then when they're really experiencing the fullness of nothingness, I'm full of nothing, 
then I, I'll say this, with their eyes closed, their eyes are still closed, they're still feeling that fullness of nothingness, then I'll say this, God is everything, and God is nothing. And beyond everything and nothing, God is, I am, thou art. And then we just hang out in that beautiful space, one with God for as long as we choose to. God is everything, God is nothing. What's been happening all these centuries, all these lifetimes, is we've been pursuing God as everything and rejecting God as nothing or nothingness. That was our mistake because if you reject God as nothingness, you've gone out of, out of balance within duality. But when you suddenly recognize, wow, God is everything, God is nothing beyond everything and nothing. See, it's, it's a transcendence of that duality of everything and nothing. We got out of balance even before this journey began, identifying with God as everything. All God wanted to do was get us to experience God as nothing. This is right back now to the original moment when we separated from God. All God wanted to do was get us to experience that balance of God is everything, God is nothing, and beyond that, God is, I am, thou art. But the moment we went into duality, we made a mistake. We judged it. We didn't like it because we thought the original duality was from oneness, oneness with God, to separation because that's what it felt like because we were so used of, uh, to, to being with God as everything. Suddenly, God is nothing. It felt separate. We judged it, and in that moment, we locked ourselves into the journey. And it's purposeful. There's a reason for it, but I'm not going to go into that now. So it, we're on a profoundly mysterious journey. We are in service to God, whether you know it or not. Everyone that is here on planet Earth at some level has volunteered for this journey in service to God. And uh, we just have to remember what that service is. Stop complaining and complete the journey. And to complete the journey is simply to become present at such a level that you open into oneness, oneness with God, heaven on earth, and you realize, wow, this is it. End of journey. Of us all, Leonard, just big, big, big thank you. I uh, see that we are at the end of our time together and I want to honor that. Um, I also want to give you the opportunity if there's anything that you have coming up that you would like to share with our community, it would be a perfect time to let us know. Okay, I appreciate that. So um, I'm about to head off to Australia soon for a, a visit. I'm from Australia. I'll be away for about a month. I do. Th this is what I think people need to know at this stage. I'm doing regular Zoom meetings online, and we call them deep presence. So it's both going to a very, very deep level of presence through the Zoom meeting, but also I answer questions so people can ask questions or share whatever they want to share. So there are Zoom meetings we do. Uh, I think at this stage we're doing two a month, you know, just on a Sunday morning at the moment. So that's one um, thing. I've got a Provence retreat coming up in May next year. But, uh, and we've got other retreats planned. We haven't set them up yet. Um, I've been out of action for about three years because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So the next Provence retreat will be the first live event I've done, although I am doing Sunday morning gatherings locally here in person. Uh, the only other thing I would say, and this is good news for everybody who is tuning in right now, is that um, I've developed a beautiful app called the Awaken Now app. Yeah. And uh, it's been in existence for a couple of years. It's beautiful. It's got a lot of my teachings there, a lot of my meditations, including the God meditation, the inner child meditation and all of it. And uh, just recently, in fact, we're still working on it. We've made the app free so people can join for free. Because my intention, I've been teaching for 40 years. My intention is to make this teaching as available to everyone as possible. Some things you have to pay for because we have to cover all our expenses, etc. But um, my intention is to make the teaching as available as possible in its completeness and fullness so that it can't be messed with. And I'm, all of this is for when I leave the body, I want to leave the teaching behind uh, in its fullness. And I've been doing that for 40 years, putting it all together, and there's a lot of material. So anybody is so interested... The name of the app again, Leonard? The app is, is called the Awaken Now app. 
and it's available on the Apple on the Apple Store and Google Play. You can download it for free from the Apple and the Google stores. Yes, perfect. And uh, then, if you sign up on our website for our email to, on our email list, or how, however you can sign up, um, then you'll always be notified of upcoming events. And we don't overdo it, and we respect everybody's privacy, of course. So that's just just ways to be involved. But um, you know, I'm getting on a bit in years, so I'm not sure how long I'll be running live retreats. I've been running retreats. I mean, in China, I, I've I've got a large following in China, as hard as that might be to believe. But you know, I have a very I'm more popular in China than I am here. So I don't get it, but they obviously need it over there. So I think it's the combination of the emotional release work that I do that they're not used to. So it's really helpful for them. But, you know, I teach in China, I teach in Japan, I teach in Denmark, or I was teaching in Denmark, in France, in Australia, and in America. So my books have been published in many different languages. So all of that's good, but, um, you know, it's all available for those who are interested. And as Jesus said, as Jesus said, and I totally go along with this in relation to what I teach, it's really for those with ears to hear and those with eyes to see. And for those who are not ready, so be it. I pray that you'll be ready tomorrow because we need everyone to awaken. Absolutely. Again, okay, so thank you. It's been a real pleasure speaking to both of you and to, to your community. And thank you to everyone who's been uh, present during this it has been our pleasure to host you and i just want to invite anyone who may feel called if they will feel supported in any way by the teachings that are here or any teachings that leonard has given us that you are welcome to make a contribution to continue to support his teaching i did place a link in the app but if you uh, are listening on the live streaming or on a later recording, you can go to www.leonardjacobson.com backslash donate. Uh, so okay. we encourage you to contribute in that way if you feel called. And uh, we just want to thank you again, Leonard. And anything to say? No, just thank you for uh, for uh, welcoming, welcoming me to this uh, talk. And uh, I always value the opportunity to share the teaching with those who might be ready. Thank you, Leonard. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank, so thank you both very much. And your questions have been great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you again for watching our sat song. We'd love for you to visit our community at awakening-together.org. There are plenty of free resources. And also you can join us live right in our sanctuary. We hope to see you there. Please remember to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so that every time we have a sat song or any other teachings like our weekly gatherings, you'll be alerted. Thank you again for watching.